Okay, next item, please. We have no discussion items. Next item is citizen participation. Citizens wishing to address the board of, on agenda and non-agenda items for action who are signed by 710 by submitting a blue card to the secretary may speak at this time. The board may not be in a position to respond to non-agenda items. Therefore, speakers should not anticipate an immediate response to their comments or questions. For the benefit of all concerned, please do not mention the names of students or school district employees. Please keep your comments brief as, uh, comments as brief as possible. The board president reserves the right to limit times. We have one blue card on a non-agenda item. Um, this is from Hussein Beydoun, who wishes to speak about measuring school quality. Mr. Maleko, members of the school board, President Petroskov, thank you for having me today. Uh, and bear with me, please. Uh, I spent my break uh, getting all four of my wisdom teeth removed, oh, so this side of my face is kind of not cooperating right now. It's, uh, I still don't have any feel feeling there, so I apologize for that and bear with me as I try to labor through this. Uh, my name is Hussein Beydoun. I've spent the majority of my life and entirety of my teaching career here in Dearborn. I would like to speak to you today about standardized testing and its use as a measure of school quality as mandated by state and federal law. Uh, like any good history teacher, I would like to lead this discussion with a primary source quote for you to think about. Quote, the Army mental tests had proven beyond any scientific doubt that like the American Negroes, the Italians and Jews were genetically ineducable. It would be a waste of good money to even attempt to try and give these born morons and imbeciles a good Anglo-Saxon education, let alone admit them into our fine medical, law, and engineering graduate schools. <coughs> these are the words of Professor, Princeton professor Carl Campbell Brigham, who analyzed testing data results from over 100,000 Army recruits during World War I in one of his published works. Brigham was part of a growing eugenics movement at the time that believed that intelligence was genetic and that different races and ethnicities were biologically more intelligent than others. You may not know who he is, but you are familiar with his work. In 1926, Brigham used his work with the Army to develop the Scholastic Aptitude Test, better known as the ACT. To Mr. Brigham's credit, he later changed his views but the SAT has remained largely unchanged in its purpose since its inception. Every Michigan student by law is obviously, of course, mandated to take the SAT as well as other standardized tests, and their scores are used as a way to measure school quality and teacher effectiveness. The problem is that standardized tests in general are a poor indicator of what they are designed to do. Consider some of the following evidence. A 2014 study by the Association for College Admissions Counseling analyzed data from 123,000 college students and found that there were trivial differences in the GPAs and graduation rates of those who submitted SAT and ACT scores and those who did not. Uh, in addition to that, research conducted at Seton Hall University recently was able to predict with overwhelming accuracy the percentage of students who scored proficient or above on standardized tests using just three variables. The percentage of families in a, fa a community making over 200,000 a year, the percentage of people in a community living in poverty, and the percentage of people in the community with bachelor's degrees. In fact, by using just one variable, the percentage of people living in poverty in the community, the researchers were able to explain nearly 60% of the test scores in eighth grade English language arts testing. Dozens of other studies corroborate these findings and confirm that pretty much 60 to 75% of test score data is dependent on factors outside any school control or the school environment. Those are but a few examples that highlight stark truths about standardized tests. They are not great indicators of student success. They can hardly be considered objective or scientific, and student performance on these tests are overwhelmingly dependent on socioeconomic factors outside of any school's control. If state and federal law leans heavily on judging schools and teachers using testing data, and the data itself more or less just reveals whether the school, there is a high degree of poverty in a given school district, what does that say about the future of public education? <laughs> As pro problematic as these tests may be, obviously, as we know, they matter quite a bit. Families looking to move to a new neighborhood use real estate websites that literally rank schools as good or bad using basically just the test scores as the only variable. Communities are stigmatized and ostracized by these test scores, and it creates a climate where our schools begin to place heavy emphasis on test preparation at the, expen at the expense of all the great teaching and learning going on in our classrooms. 
the influence of test scores is only growing. Beginning in the next school year, current law in Michigan mandates that third graders need to be held back for a year if they don't achieve proficiency on the reading section of the MSTEP. Whose idea of educational justice would that be? What educator or parent in the right mind would ever recommend such a violent policy measure? Where is the research that shows that this is even a good idea? If test scores are going to continue to be used as a measure of student performance, then we need to begin having much more reflective conversations about state and federal policy that fails to address the lack of access working class families have to adequate health care, dental care, living wages for parents, food security, and housing security. Until that happens, we should focus our efforts in Dearborn to find more meaningful ways to measure school quality. School districts like Somerville, Massachusetts <coughs> have already undertaken such efforts and can serve as an inspiration for what we can do here in Dearborn. The Somerville community developed a metric which measured factors they deemed valuable, like the ability to produce engaged and thoughtful citizens, an appreciation for diversity, participation in the arts and literature. What sorts of community support does the school have? What about special education and ELL teachers, and do they have enough resources to do their jobs effectively? These are the types of factors and questions that need to be addressed in an open forum between teachers, parents, community leaders, and other stakeholders in order to truly paint a better picture of what's happening in our schools. We can never let test scores be the driving force for any change. The strengths and values of our Dearborn community are what carry us, and there's too much at stake for us to ever lose sight of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Trustee Lane. Uh, before you leave, Coach Baydoun, uh, I'd like to say huzzah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you're going to have any arguments you're not, from any of us. You have no argument here. Yes, As a matter yes. of fact, I just want to ask you, would you send these comments to uh, Department of Education Secretary Betsy DeVos and Governor Whitmer? That was on my agenda. I had some good, things planned good, out. Good, because uh, really. <laughs> I don't think you have that argument here, but I, w I would love to have you forward to Dr. Maleko, uh, who would forward to us the reading about well, the Well, if I didn't have soccer practice, I'm sorry. I didn't yes, I know. That's really if important. If I didn't have soccer practice yeah. after school, I probably would have printed off some of the <coughs> oh, data that I had. Thank you. But if you have it available, please forward it on. I'd be glad to look at it. And, yes, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't think you're going to find much argument here. No, Maybe absolutely. somebody, but absolutely everything that you've said, uh, I think almost all of us agree with. Agreed. Yeah. Absolutely. And I also enjoy a good history lesson, too. Yeah. So thank you for that. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Trustee Mead. No, I just want to say yes, it was well-researched. I support your point of view. Thank you, sir. Right to the nth degree. So we, we have a lot that. of work to do to assess academic progress for our students. I'd really like just to be able to, like they're doing in places like Somerville, a place like Dearborn deserves to be at the forefront of how we decide You're right. our school gets measured as opposed to a very... I would say problematic metric. You're on so target, my friend. Yeah, we have, but we have to comply with no, the law, the I, and, we, and we don't yeah. particularly like that, yeah. but I'd like to hear uh, more, and I'd like to yeah. see more about what some... They still as well. They yeah. just have other ways to kind of, you know... <clears throat> the, real, the, real, the real big thing is when people look on school or on real estate websites and they decide to think about moving to a certain part of Dearborn, well, this is bad, this is mm -hmm. good, and then that kind of creates a... Yeah, the unfortunate thing is, is that even if we were to have a, a different kind of measure, because we, we, we have sung our praises over and over again, what gets seen yeah. by people who are searching right. generally is not going to be that, that measurement. They, that gets kind of lost in the background, and they still go to the traditional sites that right. have that yeah. A, B, C, D exactly. uh, well, measures, that, because that's that, yeah. what they trust. They... You know, it, it, we know it's not valid. But well, speaking but, of ABCD, uh, we're going to have that. Yes, we're going to. Well, that's why I use it. Well, well, we're, so. get, we're they're interviewing a new uh, state superintendent, so we'll see. We'll see what happens down the road. But uh, yes, right now we're kind of uh, our hands are tied a little bit with what we can and cannot um, do in order to uh, prove our value. But uh, we just continue to 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 tell our story. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Superintendent. I, I support all the comments here, and I can just tell you I'm very active on the political front in Lansing with the different organizations, including the Wayne County, RISA, um, uh, the Tri-County Alliance, and the MASA, um, which is the, the State Superintendent Association, and the School Board Association is also active. 
and they've been generally aligned. And I can tell you, and I did put this, and I've been vocal, and some of the trustees were at my address at, at the Renaissance where I spoke out against some of these things. And it just came out that the uh, Attorney General has said that the A to F is a violation mm -hmm. of federal yes. law. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it, it was pushed through lame duck for political reasons. We've been very outspoken on some of these things. Mm -hmm. I am optimistic that you know the governor did come out and she wasn't you know the read by third and other things she's been opposed to, and so we again have to comply with the law, mm -hmm. but work with you and. Um, that this is a particular area of interest for me because I studied No Child Left Behind in my dissertation, and so I That's have a yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I have some very strong viewpoints, and so I will continue to work with the board, and I appreciate the comments to advocate for our students. So we that's why in Durham we've tried to take a multi measures approach, and one thing that we are proud of, and I know the board is proud of this, and we presented at the National School Board is our advanced ed school improvement process. I know Ms. Farage leads that, and that's been really ingrained as we actually go into the schools and see what's going on, and we provide some guidance it's it's not the the end all fix but it is one measure that can be used to help with because these scores that come to us no one really has set foot in our buildings to really see what's going on and so that's, that's why we really uh, value that this model that we've developed and I appreciate the support of the board uh, with that so and last year you might remember the February meeting we had an outstanding report with the oh, same with the, with the advanced said with some with areas that we still need to improve yes. we always want to continue to improve so we're going to continue to look at multiple measures appreciate it thank you all for your time I really appreciate thank it you. thank you thank you well said Sue Maybe we could add soccer goals to uh, one of the measures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks, uh, he gave the thumbs up to that one. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, next item, please. Board of Education Business, acknowledgement of correspondence. I think we have a couple things at our table, but haven't had time to take a look at that. I got a boatload of thank yous from, I think this is all from different schools from reading. for a reading last mm -hmm. month. Uh, March's reading month is always a fun time, getting a chance to get out to the different schools and interact with the students. Anybody else? Okay, next please. Board member committee and organization reports. We had several committees tonight. Trustee Lane. We had the uh, building and site committee uh, earlier tonight, and uh, there, <coughs> so there were about eight areas. I'll just quickly go over these. Bond development, um, is, uh, update on that. The bonding capacity that we have with no mill increase is about $220 million. I know, trust, or President Petchlikoff, you were taking precise notes. Yeah. It was 219.5 plus <laughs> two, tw a slight bit more because of inflation or something. I don't know. But uh, the capacity is big. It'll be 20-year bonds. The proceeds for those projects will probably be all over the district, all of the different projects. We have immense needs, of course, and we have a list that uh, Mr. Grzynski and Mr. Rangos are working on. And they have a district strategic bond steering committee, DSBSC, which is uh, forming. And uh, we have a list of all the the uh, organizations that will be sending people for that. Number two, there are kitchen renovations happily at Maples and Lori. Those are coming out of the food service fund, which continues to be in the positive, actually quite a bit in the positive. And uh, I think we have a letter that we need to spend more money actually on. We need to reinvest. Yeah, we, we and, and we are reinvesting the money back. Any uh, monies go back into kitchen renovations which are sorely needed, particularly when the average age of our building is 70 plus. So uh, Maples mm -hmm. and Lori are $800,000, uh, but they're below the estimated price. Third, on the air conditioning update, uh, there are several schools that are in the process. I didn't write them all down because the list was too long and we were moving too fast through it, but two that are done are McDonald and Snow. Uh, Mr. Baydoun, uh, Mr. Nasser Baydoun mentioned the budget for Salina Intermediate for which AK Steel made a donation. So that uh, project is in the works as well. Um, media centers, uh, the original budget was 600000 for that. Another update was on hydration stations. Um, they are half done, I believe. Uh, but we did get feedback that the students really are loving them, and now they are no, no longer using the water fountains. <laughs> so uh, one improvement and then a change. Uh, but all of the water fountains have been replaced. Anything that 
uh, tested uh, slightly deficient. We had no major problems, but they are all replaced now and they're in working order. But it may be in the future that we have to uh, do something else with the water fountains as people move to hydration stations. There was an update on summer projects. Uh, everyone will be delighted to know that as soon as graduation is done, a crew will be out starting to work on Fordson's uh, athletic field with new turf. Uh, the final drawings and the ordering, everything's been done and it's ready to go. Dearborn High, O.L. Smith, and Fordson are having renovations of their tracks. Baseball fields are being renovated. Um, and uh, who else was in Building in Sight? Yeah. So um, uh, Dearborn High, Edsel, there's been some modifications, but I think not a complete re-overhaul, just alterations of the tiles there. Uh, now, um, the, the one thing that's really major is that the parking lot at Dearborn High is being reconfigured. That'll be a lot of hubbub in the fall because all, everybody dropping off and picking up will have a new uh, configuration to go through. It's being widened at the front to three lanes big enough for two cars and a bus to get through. Uh, but it will require that people exiting in front of Dearborn High turn right only, no left turns. That will throw off a lot of people. So uh, I'm sure the City Relations Committee can bring that up uh, to the Dearborn Police who were so helpful last fall with um, the project at Stout. So, uh, But just want to let any Dearborn High parents know, probably Dr. Maliko, Mr. Adam, uh, Martin needs to be getting on his parents right now and telling them you'll see something all different at Dearborn High next fall uh, as you, we welcome you back. Fordson Machine Shop has been renovated. It's being made into two classrooms, and it's going to be completed by June. Uh, Mr. Grzynski is also using whatever leftover, leftover paint and leftover paint budget to paint hallways and gyms. So uh, those are almost done. That's a slight amendment. We had money left over in the prior budget, so we're able to get more work done rather than less. Uh, and then Dr. Ball updated us on the security grant. Uh, and for I'd card like, readers on right, doors. Right, card readers on doors. So that's uh, a short uh, update on building and site. Trustee Thorpe? The Finance Committee met earlier today. Uh, Trustee Lane already touched on some of the items that we discussed with the Infrastructure Committee and the potential for a bond. Uh, we also had discussed uh, the purchase of some property adjacent to Hague Elementary School. We went over a budget update. We're still waiting on additional information from the state of, uh, of Michigan. While we have the governor's proposal, we're waiting to hear from the House and the Senate uh, so we can get a better idea what our budget will look like. We're also budgeting for a small decrease in student population, so we're making adjustments to the budget there. Uh, and we also will be looking at putting a new cell tower behind Stout Middle School, and there's some other potential uh, plans to do additional cell towers throughout the district. Uh, we also had a meeting on the superintendent evaluation, and the plan is to have that completed uh, prior to our May school board meeting so we can uh, have that as an agenda item on that uh, meeting. And now I'm going to ask uh, Trustee Thorpe to read the summary of the action items we approved right. because we forgot that. <laughs> so if you can go back to action items and find the summary go page. Go back to the future. Yes. <laughs> summary of agenda items. Number one, approval of warrants. Number two, approval of contract to JCI Tyco for security enhancements. Number three, approval of contract to accredited lock supply. Number four, approval of increased to Trinity transportation contract. Number five, approval of professional development for special ed staff from Solution Tree. Number six, approval of the purchase of Brightlink interactive projections for Fortson High School from Data Image Systems. Number seven, approval to enter lease agreement with Tower Co. 2013 LLC for a tower, cell tower placement. Number eight, approval to purchase real estate agreement with the city of Dearborn. 
Number nine, approval of change orders. Number 10, approval of air conditioning equipment installation enhancement at Bryant and O.L. Smith. Number 11, approval of a one-year extension for audit services by Plant Moran. Number 12, through, I think the numbers are wrong here. Number 12, approval of purchase, to purchase laptops and monitors at O.L. Smith Middle School. I'm guessing this is uh, 13 through 16 of, is approval of non-instructional and instructional personnel at P12. Number 17, approval of financial statement. Number 18, approval of policy updates. Number, it says 18 again, so I'm guessing that's really 19. Approval of renaming of Administrative Service Center Welcome Center. Number 19, approval of donations. Okay, thank you. Next item, please. Now we'll get back on track. Was there, yeah, was there any more board member superintendent commentary? We haven't gotten to that. We haven't gotten yeah, to that's that. That's the next item. It's all next. right. Were we all done on the uh, committee reports? Uh, any other committee so. reports? I guess we're okay. done. Board okay. Members, board member superintendent commentary. Well, if nobody else, um, because I should always remain last, <laughs> but if nobody has any commentary, I, I just have a quick commentary. Um, and this is uh, pertaining to last month's meeting. I had a, um, a number of people come to me concerned that um, I had been intimidated uh, at, to change my mind at a vote uh, that was emotional at last month's meeting. And I want to um, just assure everyone that I have not changed my philosophy on how I approach um, decision making. I'm not a rubber stamp and I don't think anybody here sitting at the board um, feels that they are either. And that I exercise my authority um, when it's necessary. But there are some times that I pick my battles. And I just want to read that um, the part of the board philosophy, which is in our bylaws. The board has the dual responsibility for implementing statutory requirements pertaining to public education and for meeting the desire of residents. While the board has an obligation to determine and assess citizen desires, it is understood that when the voters elect delegates to represent them in the conduct of spe specified educational programs, they at the same time endow their representatives with the authority to exercise their best judgment in determining policies, making decisions, and approving procedures for carrying out that responsibility. And under our board ethics, we render all decisions based on the available facts and independent judgment and refuse to surrender that judgment to individuals or special interest groups. And we encourage the free expression of opinion by all board members. Now what I'm trying to communicate here is that there are times when we will be asked to take a vote, make a decision, and we may change our mind as the moment changes for us. It doesn't mean that we've um, acquiesced or that we are um, all voting under pressure as much as it means that um, our decisions have changed because of the circumstances um, surrounding it. But that uh, whenever necessary, and I say this to the board now as we move into another phase of uh, decision making that we all have an obligation to not abdicate our responsibility and our authority to vote with the um, best interests of the district in mind and that we make those decisions based upon uh, what we know to be the district's best interests at all times. And I just want to make sure that everyone understands in the community who came to me that we do not um, take that lightly, that we understand that we have that responsibility and that we will all exercise that responsibility. Thank you. Request for information and or future agenda items. Trustee. Uh, last month I had requested some information <coughs> about the um, busing delays as far as special ed goes. Um, I have received additional information that uh, that's continuing to be a problem. So I just wanted to throw that okay. out there that I'm still interested in that information. Okay. I know I haven't given you much time yet, 
but it continues to be a problem. So I really think we need to. Yeah, Mason, can you? I think there was some some of that was put in board briefs, but there's some challenges with the Trinity in the request. Yeah, good evening, Trustee McDonald. Um, did you? I, so I did put quite a bit in the uh, board briefs. I haven't finished looking at them yet. Okay, I we've had a lot on our plates because so. <laughs> I thought it might come up. So I can give you the hard copy. Okay, but I can sum it up for you as well. So um, we were it, we were aware. Our director of transportation was aware that delays had been a concern, and Trinity and he's been communicating that with Trinity because um, the, the the delays are all involving Trinity Transportation, the the services that they provide. Um, he did say that at the time, so this was like last board meeting, that they had just switched under new management, and it had only been two weeks since the new person was in place and was supposed to be addressing all of these concerns that we've expressed. Um, now it's been six weeks, about more, yeah, about six weeks now, so we are ready to revisit it. Um, I did also ask someone that I know that works in the district that said her son is on one of the Trinity buses, and she was upset about the delays, and she felt that it had improved, but that's just one person. Um, we don't have any means to knowing what my question was for Mark Andrews, our director of transportation, was, um, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mark, do you want to, you're welcome to join. Um, my questions to him were specifically about, um, do we have any way to know what time <coughs> drop-offs are and what time pickups are? Like, is there a time stamp when they make a stop? And so our buses that we own are not equipped to do that. And he has requested that information from Tr Trinity, but they haven't had it. They haven't been able to provide it. Do you want to speak any further? Yeah. I mean, I it, 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 the timing of it as well. Uh, so there's no software really that you can, that's available out there to determine if a bus, that you can just run a report to see if it's running on time. So the only way you can do it is to physically go through the GPS and look at the history of each specific bus. That's what we, me and Mason requested. And I literally just got some of that data about two hours before the board meeting, so we can forward that on. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah. I'm just, it's an ongoing concern. And then, do you want to share, Mark also said that the data that we get, so how do we know if they're on time or if there's concerns? Usually, um, building administrators will complain to Mark, hey, this, this has happened with whatever the situation is. And they hear is. it from the parents. And they hear it from their parents. Sometimes parents go direct to transportation <clears throat> okay. as well. Um, and so we actually talked about possibly like surveying our administrators to say like, what kind of service are you seeing? What are you hearing from parents? So we can kind of get some of our own anecdotal information as well. So more information to come. Thank you. Absolutely. I, I do have a question. Since Trinity seems to be the only game in town right now and we have a contract with them, what's our what's our carrot and stick with them if you know, because they kind of they kind of can just, you know, say, Hey, this is how we're gonna operate and take it or leave it. You can recruit their bus drivers and buy more buses. Yeah, Mason's been working and HRs are working really hard to let me speak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to recruit some drivers and we've been getting some better traction we've been getting some interviews so that's a good sign yeah. um, the carrot that we have with Trinity is as we did back in 15 16 we did a three-year extension with them and that that sunsets at the end of this school year so as of July 1st we're gonna be looking at an option of going out and rebidding are, are there any viable other transportation Absolutely. There is definitely companies that are just as big or bigger. You have ABC and you okay. have Durham that are right. as equivalent. Well, we right. better make, make that clear to them. that. Uh, yeah. Okay. How are they able to get drivers and we can't? That's a good question. Um, I would say, I would say that, well, I wouldn't say that they're doing a good job of it because a lot of Trinity's problems is because if you boil it down to it's driver shortage. So the big problem that our parents are experiencing is when they don't have drivers, and that's why we're going to them because we're struggling in getting drivers, so their whole office staff is, is going out on the road, leaving just a skeleton crew, and there's a communication breakdown, and that's really the, the crux of the problem that our parents are, are going through right now is the communication breakdown that they're not being told, we're not being told that the buses are being delayed to communicate that to them so they can prepare. Then that really boils down to driver shortage because their drivers who are normally in the office on those days are out on the road, leaving maybe just one or two people for emergencies. All right, then something we continue to keep our eye on. Absolutely. Can I just plug this yeah. stipend? Yeah. Referral yeah, please. Sorry, it's an opportunity to plug this. So I'll be sharing this memo with all of you soon. I haven't shared it with the staff yet, but all staff, so we're implementing a referral stipend for the 
hard to fill position. So bus drivers, so any of our employees that refer us a bus driver or a substitute bus driver, because that's really where the shortage is right now that we feel, um, a custodian, um, a parapro, special ed parapro. So once they work 20, so if they're an employee that we hire after the probationary period, the employee that referred them will get $50 referral stipend. And then if it's a substitute, like a substitute teacher that they referred and that sub worked 20 days in our district, then our, our staff member will get $50. And so right now we just set, a, a, we budgeted a certain amount and we'll revisit it to see like, is it effective? Are we, you know, are people, um, are we getting more um, positions filled, more sub positions filled? And so that's just one step in the, in the direction of trying to be more aggressive and because we all know someone and we have a huge district, so. Mm -hmm. Thank okay, you. thank you. Uh, Trustee Lane. I have a couple of things that I'd like to ask about. So um, we're now three years, I believe, on uh, implementing, starting the seal of biliteracy. I think we've graduated three classes. So I was wondering, Dr. Maleko, whether Mr. Dr. Patterson is able to do any kind of analysis, <coughs> uh, even an anecdotal uh, uh summary for us just to know how many graduates are we increasing in our graduates are we dropping off uh, um, are they in certain categories and then do we know whether they're finding it useful uh, job wise or not uh, another thing uh, that we were talking about last fall that I haven't seen referenced lately is uh, Dearborn Promise Scholarship uh, whether that committee has been set up and if people are on it uh, I do remember that um, uh, former trustee Nasser was interested in serving. So um, I'd just like an update on sure. what's going on with that. Uh, there used to be a publication that uh, came out of uh, the administrative office called Board Report, and I haven't seen that in a long, long time. I don't know whether that still exists. It used to go to all the buildings. But I did want to ask whether, since I noted earlier, that the, the college and the district uh, seem to be integrating uh, better. Uh, Mr. Cavaluna is usually here or someone else from the college. He is. But he's yeah, I, I know he's here right now. But my, uh, my question to throw out there is uh, are we, are, how aware are both entities of what's going on besides the, 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 the heads the of each or, or, yeah. Yeah, organization? Uh, is that getting down to the lower levels? So if we express at this meeting that we want um, more uh, integration between the high school math and the college, you know, so that we know what they're looking for at the college level, is that filtering down? So that's, that's my question. Um, and, you know, I, I, it, it seems like it would be easier to mention it in one place rather than us mentioning yeah. it twice at both places, so I, I want to, I'd just like to know whether that's getting down. To piggyback down. on your thoughts too, Mary, mm -hmm. it's just con communication in general between right. the two entities. I don't know if there's, <coughs> excuse me, one person that facilitates that or <coughs> perhaps there should be, just something to, to make sure that that bridge is, is crossed wow. completely and evenly. Yeah. So we need, we need to, to interface them well. Um, I wanted to also mention that um, we're, we're entering into the celebration season. I mean, the best day of the year, graduation day. So I know we'll have graduations and promotions and concerts and all that stuff coming up, but that precedes summer. And what comes during summer is summer learning loss for some students. I wanted to ask President Petchlikoff if we could have a presentation, even if very brief, uh, before everybody gets off, uh, gets out for the summer. Dr. Maleko, we had a really nice list that we were, uh, I want to say Dr. Shankman, maybe somebody could correct me, a, a while ago she had a list of suggestions for parents do these over the summer. Make sure your high schooler is reading. Make sure your elementary student is doing this. So uh, before people take off for summer, um, I, I hope that all of our schools can get out to push out to our students that they 
that does uh, that have a great summer, enjoy yourself, relax and everything, but don't don't leave learning behind in the classroom. Remember summer you need to be learning and keeping up on your skills too. So um I recall Dr. Choco giving that type of presentation as well. Uh, and she be, did last year, I yeah. think, and I think it might have been Lots of fun on. stuff, measuring things when you go to the picture. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just, Practical things. things. Yeah. So I think that there already exists a document. Yeah, there's a lot of information that the schools pump out to the, to the parents, and the, but we can get you that information. And can we do that before we all break for the summer? <laughs> so yeah. Before everybody's gone and, and ha swimming and all the other fun stuff. So... One more thing I wanted to mention, it's National Volunteer Week. We wouldn't exist in America. 10% of our economy, I've, I've read, is uh, volunteers. So I, I, we have so many volunteers in so many facets of our, our district. I want to thank anyone who volunteers in whatever fashion. Um, and then lastly, I want to throw out for people, uh, particularly for our mainstream community, probably if they live in Dearborn, they know that uh, Ramadan is coming uh, up, uh, but that will affect, uh, may affect uh, our Muslim community. It may affect our schools. So it will be starting May 5th or 6th. So just, uh, just to be, for people to be aware of it. Okay, Trustee Barry oh, had sure. his. Continuing this theme of summer, on the way in here is a beautiful day. I drove by one of the elementaries, mm -hmm. and there's had to be about 30, 40 kids out there on the swings basketball court on the track so I guess maybe at the next meeting maybe we can clarify what are what is our policy outside the school hours for use of school use playgrounds of yeah because I've seen it where some schools get a lot of use and I also seen some schools where they have the fences either locked or they take the basketball rim down for the summer what have you so it should be the same throughout the district whatever it is uh, you know I, I know this past decade we've lost a couple parks some pools so if we can create activity for our young ones during the summer, I would support that. But I guess the next meeting I'd like to see, you know, what is the policy? And is it uh, I think it's policy? individual to school, and I will tell you why. Because um, I get a lot of complaints through the neighborhood associations because some of those school playgrounds back up to residences and a lot of late-night activity, especially with the basketball courts, um, which is disruptive to the sleep of the people who back up to where they were, such as Henry Ford Elementary School. So they took down their rims because the neighbors were complaining that there were adults coming on at, late at night um, and using the playground facilities to play basketball games. And it was right up against their fence lines. I so. can't think of any elementary school that doesn't back up to right. uh, and so know, that's, houses that's or faces why. houses but, or but that, whatever. But that is why uh, the, some schools have responded by taking down um, the rims so that because of complaints from the neighborhood with late night activity on the school grounds. Sure, but I still would like to see sure. you know, what, is, you know, what is our policy and if, you know, if certain schools, you know, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, we can Trustee do. McDonald. As Trust, Trustee Lane mentioned, uh, Volunteer Week. I just want to throw a plug out there for our own Genoa Kirkaba of the PTA Council. She will, and I'm going to be presenting, very excited to present her, the award at the Mayor's Arts Award this Wednesday for Volunteer of the Year for all of the incredible work that she's done for a decade or so as the chair of the Reflections Program for the district. Amazing work, and she's going to... Uh, she really deserves it. So anyone that would like to come out to the Mayor's Arts Award on Wednesday, it starts at 7 at the Performing Arts Center, and uh, give her a little cheer and a thank you for all of her hard work. I'm sure she'd appreciate that support. And I have one announcement that um, I was contacted uh, this afternoon. Um, the American Association of University Women Dearborn is having their summer book sale, and it will be at the DISC at the Dearborn Ice Skating Center in the upstairs. Um, June 1st and 2nd from 10 to 5 p.m. And their proceeds support Dearborn High School, Fortson High School, Etzel Ford, HFC, and U of M Dearborn. They can also use any um, gently used books donations as well. Um, they're um, teaming up uh, because a Henry Ford Centennial Library is going to be closed um, in May through September, so they thought this would be a good time to um, advertise 
this uh, summer book sale to help uh, summer reading programs for the students in the area as well as um, create a donation pool for um, our schools. So I, I told them that I would um, get that information out there. Thank you. All right, is everybody done with announcements? Next, please. Future meeting dates. Monday, April 8th, 2019, special meeting immediately following this meeting. Uh, Monday, April 15th, 2019, HFC meeting, 7 p.m. in the Rosenau Boardroom at the Administrative Service and Conference Center at Henry Ford College. Monday, May 13th, 2019, P12 Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. And Monday, May 20th, 2019, HFC meeting, 7 p.m. at the Rosenau Boardroom at the Administrative and Services and Conference Center at Henry Ford College. Then we are adjourned for the regular meeting. Now, we are going to take a 10-minute recess so that everybody who doesn't want to remain for the special meeting can have the opportunity to leave. And um, those who need to uh, look for blue cards or and or stretch their legs have, have that opportunity. Thank you. <laughs>